give us, can you describe us the uh, all general description of this crisis? Uh, which are the roots of this crisis? What happened uh, in Pakistan last year, which leads this country to such kind of uh, riots and so on? Uh, see, the, if you look at uh, timeline of Pakistan, uh, since it became a country uh, after partition from India in 1947, it has been generally a politically unstable country. And uh, we have also seen division among the country within the country in 1971. Uh, it got divided into two halves and one became Pakistan, another became Bangladesh. That is East Pakistan became Bangladesh and West Pakistan remained Pakistan. So uh, there has been uh, a lot of political uncertainties and instabilities in that country. And the reason behind that is the type of uh, influence of army, Pakistani army on the civilian government because uh, they have got a great history of displacing uh, the civilian governments and imposing the military rule. And uh, the, the, if you look at Pakistani army, it is more of an industry than being a national army because uh, you look at their uh, businesses, uh, they are in the manufacturing of tractors, they are in the manufacturing of uh, fertilizers, they are in the uh, real estate business, they are in the even in the media production. So you name it, they are in every kind of uh, business in Pakistan. So uh, they uh, they are not just a regular army, but they uh, you can in a, if you look at a Ukrainian army or you look at Indian army, it's the state, the civilian state owns the army. But in Pakistan, the army owns a country. So you can understand how much powerful establishment the army is there in Pakistan. But what happened with the rise of Imran Khan? And let me, to for your, for your viewers knowledge, let me tell them that uh, the rise of Imran Khan was due to this very army and their intelligence. Uh, the prime minister previous to Imran Khan was Nawaz Sharif. Right now he is in exile in United Kingdom. And that guy was on odds with army. And army was looking for somebody who will be favorable for them to whom the, they can dictate their terms and their that guy should dance on army's tune. So they selected and picked up this guy called Imran Khan and he made a party, the Pakistan tehreek e insaf that is PTI, which is called as. And uh, right now, whatever we are seeing, let it be arson, yeah, let it be looting, let it be destruction of the public property. This is the playbook which army and the Pakistani intelligence taught to these guys in 2015 when Nawaz Sharif was the Prime Minister of Pakistan. To displace Nawaz Sharif, they use Imran Khan and his following. And uh, all these things in a lesser degree, they were uh, doing on Nawaz Sharif government and he uh, he eventually displaced uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif government and he had to go to exile. Previously he was there in prison, then he was not uh, doing well as, as far as his health was concerned and then he has uh, he was sent, uh, he is in exile in the United Kingdom. So uh, this was the training given by the Pakistani army to Imran Khan and his followers and that we saw day before yesterday on the streets of Pakistan when Mr. Imran Khan was arrested. Now Pakistan is in a dire situation uh, because uh, whatever has happened, uh, now it is obvious that uh, two, that is Imran Khan and uh, the all-powerful Pakistani army, they can't coexist together. Because uh, his followers has attacked the Pakistani army's headquarters. They have also attacked the uh, Pakistani intelligence headquarters. They have burned the houses of top military leadership. Uh, and uh, the, they had done anything and everything they could. That was uh, in their reach. 
and right now mr imran khan has become a cult in pakistan i don't uh, say that he is uh, just a normal political leader uh, he has developed himself into a cult and the followers of any cult let it be trump donald trump's cult what they did in washington they attacked the capitol building uh, the capitol hill and all the the, the american congress they attacked uh, similarly pakistan is a third world country so the mm, intensity of the followers of imran khan's cult was much more than what we saw in washington uh, when donald trump lost the election so the, this is not a general political party but it is a cult and imran khan's followers are the followers of a cult so nothing sticks to him uh, he was arrested on the charges of huge corruption it never sticks to him there are talks uh, and uh, there are rumors i can't verify them uh, nobody can verify them uh, that he is a drug addict but nothing sticks to him uh, people say that he is a womanizer even that doesn't st- stick to him so he has evolved into a cult and now the situation is such that uh, either he will become if army uh, backs out and st- uh, and uh, you can say surrenders to his followers then what will happen he will become the all powerful ruler of pakistan or he will become history because pakistani army and pakistani intelligence they are very ruthless people they have got a very checkered history of eliminating people so they can eliminate uh, imran khan yes uh, what is the structure of the uh... Pakistan's political system. Is there uh, some kind of parties of tribes? What is the balance and structure, general structure of political system in Pakistan? See, technically, if you see, uh, it's the Westminster kind of system. That is the system which exists in Great Britain. It is the same very system with uh, multiple parties and the a member of parliament elected member of parliament elect the prime minister and basically prime minister is the head of government with a nominal uh, head of state the president but president is just a rubber stamp there in pakistan with no real powers constitutionally as per the constitution of pakistan the all powerful leader of pakistan is the prime minister but there is a big but uh, there is parallel power which is army and army uses the civilian leadership to run their show so anybody who has come into the way of army uh, and uh, not uh, acted as a subservient to army they have been eliminated in past is, is it close to the egyptian political system something like this yes it is it is very much like a european uh, democratic parliamentary system where people elect no, no, their I representatives talking, and I'm, those I'm representatives that, select the part. I am talking about the role of army in Egypt, uh, for example. Is it like an Egyptian political system yeah. where army is ruling everywhere, but uh, civil politicians play um, only temporary or public role in political system? Uh, I, I Ruslan I will say it is not like Egypt Egypt's army is even more powerful than Pakistani army when it comes to local politics you can say that it is uh, lesser than Egypt but it is a very powerful army and it controls see I'll say that uh, Pakistan is a democracy but not a democracy Pakistan is a dictatorship of military but not a real dictatorship it is somewhere in between a military dictatorship and democracy and that is the reason all these things are happening there what what is the role of tribes in pakistan on different nations in pakistan have they some important role maybe such uh, some of tribes have special role in political system Uh, we should not use the term as such tribe but you should use the term provinces uh, mm-hmm. pakistan is made of four provinces and the biggest of them is basically baluchistan the uh, 
province of baluchistan but uh, it is having the least population and the highest concentration of population in pakistan is in the province of punjab which constitutes more than 50% of pakistani population so uh, basically you can say that uh, pakistan is punjab and punjab is pakistan they have made it like that and uh, once uh, it was uh, bill clinton who said and very rightly he said that uh, pakistani army is not uh, a national army it is basically a provincial army because the bulk of the army also comes from punjab itself now look at imran khan he is a punjabi look at the chief of army staff he is also punjabi uh, also look at the present prime minister he is also punjabi look at the prime minister who, to whom imran khan displaced he was also a punjabi so it is a power battle between the punjabis and the bulk of army is also punjabi the intel bulk of the intelligence is also punjabi so it's a punjab dominated country a province is ruling the country it no. uh, let me explain easily for your audience uh, yeah. like in case of ussr <laughs> uh, uh, the, it was mother russia <laughs> and uh, let it be ukraine or kazakhstan or uzbekistan or other stans and all these countries uh, they were just uh, accessories they were extras so this is the the same type of structure you can say for pakistan punjab is the, the, what russia used to be in ussr but uh, but uh, for your knowledge gulras uh, i say i can say that the um, um, bigger part of the soviet leaders was from ukraine were from ukraine uh, more, more than 60% of soviet yes, leaders yes. Were, were from were from ukraine and so so if we are talking about the occupation sometimes i am talking i'm i'm joking about ukrainian occupation of soviet territory uh, it's a kind of joke in ukraine now but i have more questions about pakistan of course uh, is there an international roots of this conflict because in in, in europe is very popular so, uh, so that imran khan is a pro chinese leader and uh, nowadays is uh, in pakistan we see something like a geopolitical clash between the pakistan between the china and united states who displays the imran khan is this uh, opinion right this uh, opinion right see i think uh, mr imran khan is the most idiotic prime minister of pakistan and he is just a loose cannon because and uh, i'm happy to see him why because uh, we are not very friendly with uh, pakistan as a country so if if you talk me as an indian uh, you know, the maximum damage uh, if somebody has caused to pakistan in terms of their economy it was imran khan in terms of their foreign policy uh, it was imran khan he was the person uh, who uh, moved away pakistan from all its friends let it be china china was angry with him let it be saudi arabia well, saudi arabia was angry with them let it be united states us was also on odds let it be the united arab emirates they were also on odds so he he was the prime minister uh, who reigns uh, who was uh, running such uh, a bad foreign policy bad economic policy that he was a disaster for pakistan so that is the reason i like him to see once more as a prime minister of pakistan but if you uh, ask me as a geopolitical analyst i'll say that uh, no uh he uh, he was not friendly with china he tried to be friendly with china but all the investments of china stopped during his regime uh, he tried to be friendly with donald trump but it, under his regime the us stopped all the aids and put some kind of sanction tried to put some kind of sanction uh, he tried to be very friendly with mbs that is the prime who is the prime minister and crown prince of saudi arabia but uh, he also he became on odds with even with uh, mbs so there was no world leader probably who was really friendly to uh, imran khan's pakistan and i will not only just blame uh, imran khan for that i will also blame pakistan because it was a country who always used its uh, geo geographical existence geographical real estate uh, for its benefit for running its economy for running its geopolitical power and uh, let it be the afghan war with uh, with uh, ussr 
they were very important so uh, united states was favoring them uh, they removed sanctions from them uh, just before the afghan uh, uh, soviet war uh, pakistan was under sanctions of united states of america but as soon as the war started us uh, removed the sanctions because they were wanting to use them uh, to, to to run that war against ussr then uh, came the us afghan war then again pakistan became important then it was also a gulf war even then pakistan became important this is the first time in the history of pakistan when pakistan's real estate is not really geopolitically important that is the reason imf is not giving them any loan saudi arabia is not helping pakistan united states of america is not helping pakistan the only per people who are giving something to them sometimes are chinese that's all and they are also not very happy with them because uh, all the all the investments of uh, that belt and road initiative there in pakistan they are halted because those uh, the investments which are running from the province of baluchistan the local people are not happy and they are not allowing them they are attacking the chinese construction workers so it's a yeah. mess big mess and they have created that mess because they never stood upon their feet they were always dependent on the calipers from foreign foreign aid and and, and i have a last question but also very important uh, formally pakistan is a nuclear weapon country uh, is this uh, instability in this country uh, leads us to the risks of losing this uh, Uh, nuclear weapon uh, or uh, or something like this because it's a nuclear weapon country then you a country with a very dangerous weapon in their hands see the uh, ruslan if uh, conditions go up till the level of civil war there in pakistan if uh, there is more violence on the streets definitely the world should be worried about those nuclear arsenals uh, and uh, i don't know because uh, uh, situations are changing very fast uh, right now we are recording and uh, it's uh, set uh, set it's uh, 13th of may i don't know by the time you will uh, release this podcast uh, what will happen in pakistan because things are going south very fast mm-hmm. so if uh, the country goes into a civil war then definitely world should worry about those nukes is it is it true that uh, pakistani nuclear weapon is under international control or not uh, i think the pakistani nuclear weapons are basically under the thumb of pakistani army not even the civilian government i i am talking about the european rumors because it's very popular uh, thought in europe that pakistan nuclear weapon is under the control of great britain or united states or something like this uh, no 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 I, i don't think so it's uh, let me tell you one thing ruslan mm-hmm. uh, as far as united states of america is uh, concerned they are a real power but uh, these european countries with the Uh, previously who were the colonial powers they are not that powerful to project their power in asia in any country and uh, i think uh, the that is all rumor uh, the nuclear assets of pakistan are with the pakistani army and in case of a civil war uh, then united states must act very fast and uh, take uh, those nuclear weapons uh, under control Uh, and the final question how do you think what will be the final result of this crisis how it will be end how it will be end see i will say there are only two possibilities as per my analysis either uh, rb will back down and surrender in front of the civilian leadership and in that situation imran khan will become emperor khan of pakistan and his uh, party may become something like a uh, chinese equivalent of ccp chinese communist party and he may become the xi jinping of pakistan or he will become history i and uh, i'm not uh, very uh, i'm not uh, telling some conspiracy theories because pakistani army and pakistani intelligence they are very good in uh, killing civilian leaders in eliminating them 
Uh, we hope this uh, that this country will be stable and there will not be any nuclear risk and so on. Uh, Gilbert Shreik, uh, the political doctor, political expert. Thank you a lot, Gilbert Shreik, for this uh, very professional comment and uh, this Thank discovery you. of the Pakistan crisis for Ukrainian and European viewers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Ruslan. Have a, have a nice and night. And my regards and to Ukrainians. Have a, have a nice Thank you. Night. Have a nice night and uh, all, all the best from Ukraine. Bye bye. All the best from Ukraine. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>